Hey guys, good morning. We are back down at Gabe Zimmerman and at the start of day 48. It's been a beautiful sunrise. Uh, my friend Michael that I met down here the other day picked me up, gave me a ride back, and he may actually be down in the area uh, near Sierra Vista, so I may actually get a ride from him back up here. And anyway, I just wanted to get a shot of this uh, Gabe Zimmerman memorial here. There's Michael playing his drums. And anyway, yeah, I think he's going to be down at Parker Lake, which is near the end. So he may give me a ride back up to Tucson and I, may, I won't have to take the bus. And, you know, I just am amazed at uh, how everything's working out. That's where I was the other day. And here's where I almost tripped over the rail when I came in, so I'm gonna go back down here and hit the trail. Okay, well that wasn't too far. So right here is where he cut off to Gabe Zimmerman and here's the Arizona Trail. So we are back on trail. <laughs> We're gonna do this thing, people. It's happening. <laughs> I'm really happy. Arizona Trail 2020, gonna knock it out. And uh, things have just been working out so great that it's hard to believe. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and start hiking and I'll check in with you when I get down here to I-10. Can you see a rainbow on the edge of that peak down there? That's really interesting looking. Well guys, I made it down to I-10 to the infamous snake tunnel, which is really cool, whoever did this. And I figured we'd go ahead and go through here together, like all the other underpasses. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. really dark under here. There's some graffiti it looks like. Oh yeah, the other side is way cooler. I made it over here to the other trailhead on the south side of I-10. Uh, try to say it, the Sahuarita trailhead. Sahuarita. I don't know, but they have a great resupply, uh, not resupply, but cash box here with tons of public water. They've got uh, ramen in there, peanut butter, some other like drink mixes and just stuff you might need. Trail register I signed, of course. Put a little sticker on there like I've been doing. I think I've got a really good mental boost going on knowing that uh, this is my last leg and so I'm feeling feeling good about it. Got just a little over a hundred miles and got everything worked out for the ending. So yeah, it's all it's all gone really well. I mean this hike has gone so much better than I would have ever expected. I mean all the things that have just fallen into place have been like I mean, almost like it was meant to happen. And I'm gonna mention now that I'm probably gonna film a whole lot in this last bit because since it's getting close to the end you know I'm gonna be doing a lot more checking in and especially from Patagonia to the end so anyway fair warning hey guys I just wanted to do a quick check in and just say hey what up and uh... <laughs> hey guys I just wanted to do a quick check in and uh... let you know that the day is going great. Wanted to say thanks again for coming with me on this hike. This is like day 48. I'm pretty sure it's day 48. And uh, yeah, I've just been, man, um, I can't stop smiling. I've just been so happy all morning that I'm on this last leg. I can't believe I'm walking out of Tucson. I mean, it has been the hike of my life just getting here. And still having a little over 100 miles is just, 
man, it's really fantastic. I'm just mentally in a great place. I mean, I feel really good about it. And I uh, hope you can hear me. It's starting to get windy now that I'm talking. But uh, anyway, that's really all I wanted to say was just that it's just been amazing and I feel just unbelievable. I mean, elated, I guess, that I'm south of Tucson now and it's Patagonia and the border. So anyway, I've just been walking here all morning just feeling uh, just fantastic. So I just wanted to share that real quick and again say thanks for coming with me. I can't believe I'm like looking for traffic still across the road. <laughs> How did that get there? <laughs> that was the last big sticker that I had with me. I still have a bunch of small ones, but I, um, while watching other videos, I saw gates like this where they had a bunch of stickers on it. Uh, so I brought some and I've been using them, but that's the last big one that I have. Um, I didn't have many of those. I put one on the uh, cash box at Picket Post Trailhead and then here, so. Anyway, I was just going to show you that. I think it's cool. Bam! Here's what we're walking into. And it's just kind of been winding around here. I'm not really sure. Probably going to cross another road up here. A lot of roads back here. And uh, there's one down there. Hopefully I'll... Uh, by the end of the day I should be well away from this. I mean, I can still see houses and buildings around. So... I'm hoping, I'm over, yeah, 11 miles away from where I started anyway, but um, I was a few miles on the other side of I-10, so. All right, well, I keep heading this way. Well, I was just looking at my uh, maps and I realized that I was at 693 miles, which uh, means this is, uh, over three times as far as I've ever hiked, which is 230. So I passed 690 back there, a couple miles back, and forgot to look. And anyway, it's no big deal. It's just kind of a personal milestone for me to know that I've done three times that now in one hike. So that's pretty cool. And I'm about um, seven, six point something miles from uh, hitting the 700 mark. So that's pretty exciting for me. It'll be the last biggie because uh, the trail ends around 6, 7, 88 or something like that. So anyway, I'll definitely have gone well over 800 with all my walking into town and out of town and, you know, side trips. So definitely well over 800, in fact. Well, it is about 3.30 and... I found one little flat spot down here in this, near this wash kind of, it's not super flat but it's going to do and this is probably the earliest I've set up camp in a long time but I've actually gone 19 miles and I think that's pretty good for the first day back out and I feel a little sluggish and tired, so I figured, you know what, instead of walking and getting caught in a no-camp spot and having to walk till 6 o'clock, I'm just going to stop and have dinner and lay down and um, just relax and get ready to get up tomorrow and do it all again. So, yeah, day 48 was pretty good. Uh, it's 19 miles on the dot, exactly, and so I'm happy with that. So about 61 from Patagonia, so that leaves me about 42 miles out, so perfect. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and eat, and I may do another check-in. It's so early, but if I don't, then again, I would like to say thanks for coming with me on day 48. I know it was not super eventful. Um, we don't have any really big climbs till we get past Patagonia, so I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow, but we're just kind of in these little hills for right now. And, uh, yeah, we're going to knock this thing out. Hey, good morning, and welcome to day 49. Looks like we're going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning. 
It's about 6.20. I'm probably, oh, maybe about a mile away from camp. I don't know. Not too far. And uh, I'm just heading over to my next water source, which from my camp was just about a shade over seven miles. Got a little over two liters, so it should be fine. <clears throat> as long as water's there, <laughs> which it's reported to be there, so I feel okay about it. And then um, I'll get to late in the day, I'm going to be at a place or go through a place called Kentucky Camp. And they have water there. Um, I think it's a water spigot, so they'll definitely have water there. That's about, um, I think that was about 17 miles from my camp. So, I'm going to hit those two water sources today, and when I hit that Kentucky camp, I'm going to go about a mile or two past that and set up camp there. Try to do another 19, 20-ish mile day, and just close in on uh, Patagonia. And there she is, coming over the mountain. means in a few minutes I'll be taking off this green jacket because I don't see many clouds today which means it's gonna be pretty sunny and exposed so I think it's only supposed to be in the mid to high 70s so not too bad just let me walk by okay it's okay it's okay no no don't do that Okay, you can pee, but don't look all mad like you're gonna run at me. I didn't mean to scare the pee out of you. Why well, gotta get by, ma'am? I know. I feel like I got her trapped up against that fence, so I don't want her to freak out. I'm just gonna walk on by, okay? <laughs> See, it wasn't so bad, right? So far, I feel pretty good. Uh, not too bad today. I felt really uh, sluggish at the end of yesterday. I don't know what, uh, what was going on. So hopefully today I'm gonna watch my pace a little bit more and not try to run all morning and then drag all afternoon. I'm gonna try to keep an even pace all day. And if anything, uh, crank the miles at the end of the day. That's generally what I like to do. So I'm gonna focus on that today, not, not going super fast. <laughs> I was just so excited yesterday. Man, that is gorgeous out there. Look at that. Well, I've reached the last big milestone on this hike, and this is it right here. 700 miles. <laughs> Man, I cannot even wrap my head around that. That is unbelievable to think that I've walked 700 miles. This gate is marked as 700, so I went ahead and made this just so I'd have something. And uh, this is it, man. The last big milestone. Let's go ahead and get through. Uh-oh. The old lens cap. All right, it's official. 700 miles down, people. Man. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Woo! All right. <laughs> Get a little excited about that. I mean, this is uh, amazing for me. 
700. Man, this may never happen again, so I'm going to really relish the fact that I made it this time. And uh, by the time I get to the end, it'll definitely be 800, but trail miles, it'll be about 788. So that's the last big uh, milestone on trail. So 700 guys, we made it. And in a couple more days, we'll be standing at the Mexican border. So that really uh, got a really big adrenaline rush from that. So I need to remember to slow down and not start running. But anyway, I'm happy to share this uh, moment with you. And I appreciate you guys sticking it out and we're 700 miles in so I think we're gonna make it two minutes ago I passed the 700 mile mark and I walked up here and look what I found two and a half gallons of public water thank you so much whoever put this here um, I was working my way over to the metal cattle trough but of course I'd rather have uh, public water <laughs> <laughs> that I know is good and uh, so I really appreciate whoever put this here you guys are just amazing thank you so much and I'm gonna drink up and fill up and I can probably skip the uh, cattle water now so yeah I know it's probably good but you know <laughs> I'm leaving it for you now look at that Wow, that is an amazing view. I'm not 100%, but I think that might be Micah Mountain right in front of me. I think that might be that Rincon Peak. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but you know what I mean. It's gorgeous. Look at the sky. I mean, that is just... I mean, you look up at it, it's almost dizzying, you know? Kind of like, whoa. Beautiful. I'm not super thirsty, but I like to drink as much as I can when I find water. So I'm going to try to drink at least half a liter and fill back up and keep my four liters. And I'm definitely going to make it to Kentucky camp without having to get any cow water now. So again... Thank you so much, people, for leaving this water out here. It has been a godsend, and appreciate it so much. So, thank you. Let's check it out. Oh, man, that's not bad at all. Wow. That is actually some of the best uh, water like this I've seen. I mean, I know there's a lot of algae in there, but it's super clear and looks real good. I'm less than a mile from Kentucky camp and yeah I'm gonna just keep drinking water until I get over there that way when I get there I can just drink a little bit more fill up and get on out of there and see how far I can get today hoping to do another 19 maybe 20 it just depends on how I feel when I get out of there right now I'm feeling really good uh, I don't know I've gotten a surge of energy here late in the day and the walking has felt pretty easy so if this continues then yeah I'll just keep walking uh, but I definitely want to set up a camp in daylight probably no later than five o'clock so see how far I can get between now and then but um, I'll see you over at Kentucky camp here shortly. Well guys, we are in luck again. The tap is working, so haven't checked the bathroom. I heard they were unlocked. Um, I'm not too concerned about getting rid of my trash. I thought there were 
trash cans here but there are people here and I think you can rent these things out so I'm not going to stick around super long and I'm just going to drink a liter, get a liter and well two liters and uh, head on out. This is super cool man. these floors. Um, they have a register you can sign. They ask you to, so I did. Wow. 100th anniversary. That's cool. This. this is a neat little uh, detour. Wow. How cool. Is cool. <laughs> Clawfoot. Hmm. Wow. Oh man, that's cool. I'd really like to get some of that to take home. There's some at the very end of the trail. I might try to get some of that. I thought about it way back at Picket Post. Well, this has been very interesting. How cool. What a neat old place. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get back on the trail. Let's go out here and check it out. cool. Back up a little bit, give you a shot of it. So I'm probably about 17 and a half miles in for the day and I'm hoping to walk. Um, I want to at least hit 19, maybe a little more. We'll see. I feel really good so I'm just going to keep going till around 4.30. I'll start looking for something and hopefully I'll find something within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour because it'll get dark around 5.30. So definitely been losing a lot of daylight hours um, on this hike. So days just getting shorter and shorter. But we're almost there. Just like an angel. Walking on water, standing in the high grass, whistling in the breeze, just like an angel. Walking on water, standing in the high grass, whistling. Put some flowers on my grave Listen with your heart and be still And you just might hear me sing aloud Just like an angel Walking on water Standing in the high grass I'm really surprised to see this. Um, I think I'm in a place called Gardner Canyon. 
Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't look like great water, but at least it's here. Anyway, I just passed a trailhead up there. I can hear a car up there right now. There was nobody there a second ago. But, uh, yeah, I'm probably about half a mile from there, so I'm going to keep booking. I'm pretty far off trail. It's way over that way, and I just kind of walked way back here. And I think I can kind of make a spot right in here. There's kind of several around here I could make work. Um, but I kind of like this. It's surrounded. So I'm going to clear it out a little bit, make sure there's no uh, sticks or big rocks, and I'm going to get it set up. So it gets dark pretty quick now, around 5.30, and I got here at 5 o'clock, and I just kind of tried to tuck in between all these trees here, and hope that it doesn't get super windy. It's set up really well though, so I don't foresee any problems, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty far off trail, so I like it. Uh, the other campsites I found were not bad, but they were like 10 feet. <laughs> so now I'm probably 50 to 100 yards off trail, and I like that. Nobody's even going to know I'm back here. And uh, yeah, I love the stealth camping, so uh, 5.30, pretty good. I'm not sure how many miles... Um, we did today hold on and I'll check almost 21 miles today which is really really good and uh, if I hadn't seen this over here I probably would have walked a little farther but I just figured at five o'clock this was really great and it looks good to me so um, yeah I'm happy to I'm really happy with the 20.7 I think that's fantastic so I'm going to get in there and do my usual, get cleaned up, eat dinner, and see if I have a signal, call home, and then pass out. So, thanks again, guys, for a wonderful day 49, and I will see you in the morning and day 50. Uh, we'll get pretty close to uh, Patagonia tomorrow, so good night. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to, can't believe I'm going to say it, day 50. That is mind-boggling to me, 50 days on the trail, and today I'm only going to do probably around 15 over to a place called Temporal Gulch Trailhead, and from there there's good camping and I can hike into Patagonia early in the morning since the stores don't open till 8. There's no reason to get over there today, I'll just be sitting there. Here's my spot right here, I'm all ready to go. Um, the trail is probably 50 to 100 yards that way somewhere, so I'm going to go find that. But start of day 50, here we go. Uh, first stop is going to be Anaconda Spring to get more water. Still have three and a half liters. It's about 12 miles. It's really chilly. It's uh, definitely getting to be that mid-November feel, so I'm going to go ahead and take off. Hard to believe that it was... Back in September when I started, and uh, now it's November 14th. Oh yeah, look in front, that's beautiful. So the temperature has changed quite a bit in the uh, seven weeks, and even though I'm pretty far south, I mean, I'm only 70 miles from Mexico, it's still really cold in the morning, but, I think we're going to be able to make it for three and a half more days or however long it takes, four maybe, but we're definitely about to knock this thing out. That's pretty cool. Really nice through here. Um, Little exposed, a little shady, a little bit of everything. Some good views off the ridges every now and then. It's quite nice. Really beautiful hike this morning. Had a little bit of a road walk earlier. That was kind of blah, but a lot of, uh, passed a lot of people camping. I mean, in campers and 
gigantic tents, you know, like the kind you wouldn't carry. A lot of van campers. Yeah, I probably saw about, I don't know, 15 to 20 coming up that road. So I'm really glad I stopped where I did and had my little private sanctuary campsite back there. Really nice. It was a good spot. Yeah, you can kind of see through there. Not so much, but anyway, probably about four miles or so from camp. It's still really early. I don't even know. I'm just walking slow and heading over to the Anaconda Spring. Let's see if we get a view here, probably for a second. Yeah. So nice. Well, I made it over to Anaconda Spring, and it is beautiful, man. There's a lot of great water. It's clear. It's cold. And the trail is just right up there, kind of at the top of this, where it's um, flattened out. And there's water up there on in the rocks, like on the slabs that I could have gotten. But I just started looking down here, and then I saw this. And this is clearly the best pool around. And... Man, good water. Um, slammed a whole liter here, um, as usual. Filled up with four. And gonna head on over to that Temporal Gulch trailhead and see what it's like over there. If I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and camp there. If you're heading southbound, take a left. Go down about 20 feet. And there is a giant, nice, nice pool of water down there. So, Anaconda Spring. And I'm probably a couple miles now from uh, Temporal Gulch. And yeah, we're gonna get over there. Let's go over there and we'll check it out. Well, I made it down to the trailhead and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, this little map here, kind of see what we've been through today. And uh, really see any good campsites here. It said there were good campsites. Maybe they meant near here. I mean, of course, it's just a parking lot area. I walked down through there. So, uh, of course, I'm going to keep going down the trail and see if there's anything better. I hate to backtrack, even though I did see well, there's a little site, but I don't want to camp right there. So, um, there were, uh, I don't really want to backtrack if I don't have to. I'm going to see if I can go keep going ahead. I think it's only like 3 o'clock, so I have plenty of time to find something. So let's go take a look somewhere else. Well, I thought for just a little bit that I might turn around and go back and find one of those campsites I passed, but... I just started thinking about it's gonna add <laughs> a mile or so and I thought I'm just gonna keep walking. I'm not super far off the road but at least I'm behind hidden behind all these little trees. Got this beautiful mountain in the distance and these great rock formations that I'm surrounded by and a great little flat spot here. I'm all set up ready to go. Uh, I'm just gonna get in and do my thing. Eat do my feet and, you know, rest up and get up and do it all again tomorrow. So 
Uh, day 50 turned out to be pretty great. A um, little longer, but the extra miles today are just less that we'll do tomorrow and can sleep in a little bit, so it's all worth it. And anyway, thanks for hanging out with me on day 50, and I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Hey, good morning, and welcome to day 51, Arizona Trail. I'm still standing here at my campsite. I'm all torn down. Beautiful light coming in on that peak over there. I am 4.1 miles from Patagonia, and I'm going to zip in there and go to the market. Here's my spot. I poured some of my water out because I didn't figure I need to carry four liters for four miles. So, uh, got a light pack, uh, <clears throat> got a couple tortillas and a cookie, and that's it. So, a few Cheetos. So I'm going to get there, do a quick resupply. Um, there's a coffee shop there that does breakfast burritos. So I'm going to try to zip by there, get a burrito, maybe a coffee, and head out. So day 51, here we go. So probably a couple miles from Patagonia. Just enjoying the quiet morning road walk. And it's a really easy walk. As you can see, this road is really smooth, not too many up and downs, so I should be over there probably, well, I'm going to guess in about an hour, so it's already starting to warm up as predicted now that the sun's hitting me. Probably take the gloves off soon. I'll probably just walk all the way to Patagonia before I stop and take my coat off because I don't want to take my backpack off and do all that. Just love that peak up there. That's the one uh, we were looking at this morning that was in the kind of orange glow light. Really pretty. But anyway, we are out of the National Forest and heading into who knows what. I made it to the main road. They have a sidewalk and everything. <laughs> it's uh, actually a bigger road than I expected. So it's pretty nice. I should only be about a couple blocks from the grocery store. Um, everything is pretty close together in this town. So it's about 8.15. So I got over here um, really a little faster than I thought I would. But the store opens at 8. Uh, I think the little coffee shop opened around 5 or 6. I know they serve breakfast till 11. So I'm plenty early for that. So we're going to zip through the store and then hit the coffee shop, so welcome to Patagonia. Right over there is the stage stop inn, and that is the only hotel here, and it is $120 a night, which is why I won't be staying here. But uh, if you really needed to rest up and everything, at least there's an option here, so. And it's not too bad, I've seen other people stay there, so. All right, here's the market. Let's go check it out. There's the Patagonia market where I just resupplied. Pretty good. Um, I only have two and a half, three days, so really didn't need much. And they actually had complete cookies in there. They have those everywhere now, so I just bought a bunch of those for uh, breakfast and lunch. Uh, didn't get any trail mix. This will be the first leg without it, but that's okay. I got some candy bars and other stuff. Got another bag of Cheetos and doubled up on tuna fish, so it's going to be all right. And um, I'm going to walk down here past the hotel. She said the coffee shop is down here gathering grounds, and I'm going to... Get a cup of coffee and a breakfast burrito. What a great little town stop. It's a cool town, man. It's a real walkable. A lot of people ride motorcycles, so that's really cool. And uh, anyway, I'll turn it around and show you what I'm looking at. So I think I have about a, I don't know, it's three or four miles. I think I only have about two left. I've been gone a little bit to get to uh, the next trailhead and I think I cut back um, off the road when I get there and I'm less than two miles from there now. But uh, anyway, 
Patagonia, man. One of the best little towns on the trail. I'm finally back on trail. It feels so good on my feet to be off that road and the side of the road. So I'm just going to see um, how many miles I can get today. I'm not even sure what time it is now. Uh, got really distracted back there in Patagonia with talking to everybody and hanging out, which I did not expect. I was really going to just blow through there real quick. I ended up staying probably about an hour and a half. So, anyway, I'll get a few less miles, but that's okay. It was worth it. I enjoyed hanging out and uh, talking to everybody about the trail and stuff. So, uh, well, let's see how far we can get. This is probably the warmest day in a couple weeks. I mean, it's got to be probably in the 80s, which it has not been for quite some time. So, wow. Really, uh feeling it but there's a nice shot back down into Patagonia and all the surrounding mountains really beautiful Whew. I'm breathing hard this uh, been going uphill for for a while climbing out of here but look at that really nice wonderful little town well, I'm about six miles in since I got off the road and man it's just been a lot of up and down through here not you know super steep or anything it's just up down up down very little um, there's been some kind of easy uh, parts but for the most it's been like this, just a slow steady uphill and then down and back up and it's pretty warm. I mentioned that earlier. This is the warmest day in a while. Fully exposed and uh, kind of hoping I get back to the forest uh, <laughs> in the next couple hours. Well, I almost can't believe what I'm seeing here. Um, I guess I should drink some water really quick and grab some while that's coming out. So I'm going to stop here for a minute and slam a liter and grab one. Well, this was just a heck of a find. I mean, really great water coming out of there. I sat here and drank a whole liter, filtered another one, and then filled that bottle back up. So I have four on me, one in the belly. And I had no idea this was going to be running out like this. I mean, there's a ton of cows over there and some other tanks. And I was like, there's no way I'm going over there. And uh, I happened to just keep walking and right by the trail. I mean, I just can't believe it. Everyone stay cool. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. It's all right. I'm moving on. It's okay. No need to run. I'm just going to walk by. Goodbye. Go back over there with your friends. Okay? It's all right. There you go. Uh -oh. See more. I'm way off the trail is way back up there. And it's kind of a double track road, so I walked way down here and found this one little spot that I thought could work, so I cleared it out. And there's one little sharp spot under there I'm worried about. I have a big thick piece of polycryo between it and my sleeping pad, but I may go down here. There's a dried up creek bed, and I may go down there and just see if I can find like a really thin, flat rock to slide under there and kind of wedge down in there. I think that maybe that would make me feel better because I do not want to pop that thing. 
It's lasted all this time and I want to have it until the end. So I'm going to go down there and take a look. This is what I was talking about. I went down there to the creek bed and found a couple really thin flat stones. And I'm going to slide it under the tent and put it over what I think where those sharp spots are. So this will protect the pad and it'll lay right across it and I'll never feel it and I'll kind of wedge it down into the dirt. So I think it's a good plan and I think it's going to work. <laughs> I'll let you know in the morning. Good night. Hey, good morning guys. Welcome to day 52 Arizona Trail. We're getting close, man. Um, I got everything packed up. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Uh, the little stones that slid under the tent worked out great. Not sure if that's what saved it or the polycryo, but either way, uh, the pad is intact and just got to get me through two more nights. I'm 37.4 miles from the border and today my goal is 16, a little over 16 miles to a place called Parker Canyon. So if I can do a 16 today, a 16 tomorrow, then I should have about, with including the road walk to the border, I should have roughly 10 miles on the last day. So I'm going to go ahead and start walking. It's a little chilly, not like it was yesterday, um, but it's still a little cold. I got my gloves on and everything, so I'm going to get moving and I'll see you down the trail. beautiful morning. Took the puffy off and the gloves and everything. It's finally warmed up and I'm kind of hiding from the sun right now in this shade so it feels really good but I'm definitely gonna be a hot one today you can tell. No clouds again. Not a one. So uh, I don't know if I'll be exposed all day but really doesn't matter. I'm only going a little over 16 miles. Um, a guy I met yesterday told me there's a water cache at the Canelo Pass trailhead or Canelo trailhead. One of these coming up. So I'm hoping that's still there. I'm going to get over there and take advantage of that. And then there's another one uh, before I hit camp so I should be able to top off there. And that's about it for now. Just came over the hill and I got a new view going on here. I don't know which one it is, but one of these is Miller Peak and that's gonna be the final crushing miles getting over that bad boy. I'm actually gonna get close to it today and then try to do it tomorrow, at least get to the top <clears throat> and partially down the other side and then I'll just camp somewhere there and knock it out the next day. Yeah, I'm not sure. Too bad I can't go that way and around. <laughs> trekking pole. <laughs> it's quite a difference. So this one's not doing a whole lot, but still better than nothing. Look what's back here. Arizona Trail. 
11, 12, 20, so it's well past that. And uh, the guy I met yesterday said he left a gallon here. So, anyway, all this should be public, and I'm going to drink some and fill up here. So, here we go. So, I went ahead and did the math on the sign, and it looks like we have 11.9 miles to get down there. It's supposed to be great campsites there. And just wanted to say a quick thanks to whoever left this water here. Um, it just went public, it looks like, on the 12th. People generally write the date on there when it goes public. So uh, it's been a couple days. A um, few of them are empty, but there's still three full gallons there. And that really comes in so handy. Really appreciate it. It has made my hike... I mean, carrying four liters is hard, but having good water, it has been worth it to drink great water the whole time. I mean, I've had a few sketchy ones, you know, but mostly, <laughs> I'm telling you, this has been like a charmed, blessed hike or something. I just feel like I've lucked out at every turn, so um, let's hope it continues for the next, whatever, day and a half, two days, so... We're definitely gonna finish on the 18th so today's the 16th we got today get to Parker Lake or the just the trailhead and then uh, we're gonna do 16 maybe a little more tomorrow get over Miller Peak and then man it's downhill to the border five or six people on horses came up and they came right over and I mean those horses pretty much just walked right out in that thing and drank out of it so now it's pretty muddy <laughs> it looked pretty good but anyway it was really cool to talk to those people and they had, they're gonna come back this way um after a few more miles so I'll see them again but they came up from the other direction yesterday and did about seven miles so they did confirm to me that that creek is there and flowing at Parker Canyon so um, I still have well, if I drink all this I'll still have three liters and <clears throat> anyway I'm just been sitting here chilling they were asking me how long I've been hiking and I was telling them and like you know, couldn't believe it, of course. I'm going, it's day 52, and they're like, what? So, uh, yeah, day 52, man. It's hard to believe. We were talking about Utah and up north, and I was sitting here thinking about it, and I was going, you know, it's been so long that it almost feels like that was a different hike than this one, because, I mean, it's been, you know, well over a month ago, so it's just crazy. I've never, I mean been out on a trail this long so it's weird that the first part of the hike seems very distant now check that out you know if there was water in there it'd be gross but hey that water back there wasn't the greatest but it looked good before those horses walked in it it was pretty settled you know you could have gotten a few decent liters out of there <laughs> Once they all walked into it, I mean, it was just like a mud, mud swirling around in there. I don't know how many more of these we're going to see, so I figured I'd film the last few. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Arizona Trail. Another... Beautiful day out here in Arizona. Man, it's been a pretty tough hike today, but I'm really pretty close to where I'm going actually, and it's early. It's just awesome. As you can tell, there's a great Arizona breeze. See some clouds out there. See what happens with that. This water looks fantastic. Super clear. You can see all the way to the bottom. I can see that it's moving. This is um, awesome. So um, that's just a little over 16 miles from where I was last night, and I don't think I've camped by water 
since way back at uh, Double Spring, maybe, and it's been a long time. So, let me show you what I'm gonna do. There's a bunch of spots up here. Well, I got her all set up. Uh, not the last time, but second to the last night. So, man, uh, starting to get a little bit uh, sad here, guys. Uh, like I said I am ready to be done, but it's hard to believe that it's coming to an end. You know, I put so much time and planning and thought, postponed for six months, and now here I am. And um, anyway, that's pretty much it for day 52. I'm going to hang out. I mean, it's still pretty early. I'm going to eat over there somewhere. I've been eating in my tent since it's usually late, but I'm going to drink a bunch of water and get super hydrated for tomorrow because I think there's a pretty big gap coming up in between water, so I don't want to carry five liters up the side of that mountain. So anyway, I'm going to drink up now. I'm going to get something to eat and... Day 52, been a great day, hard day. Day 53 is going to be a butt kicker. So anyway, um, we'll worry about that tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and grab something to eat and uh, I'll see you later. Good morning and welcome to day 53. will be our last full day of hiking. Um, probably a mile or so away from camp. I wanted to get up early and get a good start on this. Um, my goal is to make it 17 and a half miles today to a place called Lutz Canyon Trailhead. And my first water will be 15 miles in, so I drank a full liter this morning and uh, filled everything up. So I feel good. Wanted to get started early because it, it already feels kind of warm. I mean, I have my puffy on, but I have the sleeves pulled up and everything because I have no gloves on today. It's just not as cold as it has been. And this is almost it. Last full day. And tomorrow we'll be at the goal. At least that's the plan. So if I can get the 17.4, I'll only have less than four miles to the Montezuma Pass trailhead, and then I'm just saying about a five mile road walk. So I could do about nine, 10 miles tomorrow. And that'd be great. So hard to believe. What a beautiful morning it's turning into. And there she is. Take a look behind us real quick. Beautiful. So I camped in Parker Canyon, but this is Parker Canyon Lake, and they do have camping there. I think it's about ten dollars a night I want to say but I had a great spot um, anyway so far a beautiful morning probably gonna do a whole lot of filming today and tomorrow since it's the uh, finale so uh, get used to hearing this voice <laughs> all right man Let's get, let's get a few miles in before we take another picture.
cool sign here. Check it out. Jacob Lake. That was a long time ago. Flagstaff. Have the other stuff. Pine. Basin. All that. Oracle's probably in here somewhere. Really cool. So we're the orange line. You are here. So we're about to do that right there. Awesome. I'm already about close to seven miles from camp. So I've been making good time. It's about nine o'clock. And I'm just hoping I can get up to that spring at a decent time. So it looks like this right in front of us is what we're gonna be going up. So hopefully there's a lot of switchbacks. Miller Peak Wilderness, Coronado. A little bit of water there. Terra K, free water after October 26th. I may take a little bit of that and drink some while I'm here. I'm finally into my last Gatorade, so. <laughs> uh, let's see, Sunnyside Canyon, Arizona Trail. That's us. All right, well, I'm gonna drink a little bit of water here and uh, take advantage of this, maybe take half a liter of it, and uh, just take a little five to 10 minute break and get ready for this. This should be the beginning of the hard part right here. Um, I took a good break back there, drank about half a liter, ate some Pop-Tarts, um, just hung out for a minute, left a liter or so in that jug for somebody behind me. And uh, so this should be it. And hopefully I can get up to that bathtub spring and I don't know how long it'll take me. I'm hoping I can do it in three or four hours. So just depends on how steep and rocky it is. So anyway, this is kind of the last um, challenge for me on this hike. If I can get up to the top of this and camp up there, then we'll have an easy out in the morning. So. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but I think no matter what it throws at me at this point, I'm just going to take it in stride and knock it out. So let's do this thing. Come on, Miller Peak. Bring it on. Check this out. <laughs> that could be dangerous at night. You were wandering around. Pretty cool. And a sign. Let's see what we got. Crest Trail 2, Pat Scott Peak, Miller Peak 8.0. Well, that's scary. <laughs> All right, I guess I better get to walking. Well, I have no idea how far I've come up, but I'm gonna guess a pretty good way based on what I'm seeing out there. Beautiful. I think I'm gonna make it. 
Here's a good shot of a uh, Parker Lake down there. And I camped about two miles on the other side of that, so kind of a good perspective of how far we've come today. Looks like I have 3.4 miles to get to the water that I was talking about earlier. And it looks like I'm at 8,471 feet. So, it looks like the bulk of the climb is over, really. <clears throat> I mean, I kind of go back down a little bit, then back up a little bit, and... When I hit that, um... Bathtub spring, it's called, I'll be at 8563, so... Let's see, I'm at... 8471, so... That's good news. I think I've got the big part of the climb out of the way. I'll tell you, this is a hard climb, but it's got so many great switchbacks that it really made it a lot easier. And as far as all the mountains that I've climbed on this trip, I'd say it's one of the hardest, but definitely not the hardest. So I was really concerned about it last night just because of my lack of energy and I'm kind of wearing out you know but I actually got up it pretty good man you got to see this I was getting ready to take off figured I'd take a look <laughs> it's pretty impressive that is awesome man look at that wow All right, well, I was just about to leave, and I <clears throat> walked over there and saw that and figured, man, got to get a shot of that. This is a great little break spot here. One of the best I've had, actually. So comfortable, it's hard to get up and leave, but let's get going here. Onward to Bathtub Spring. seen a couple deer over the last few days. This is the first one I've been able to get on camera. Oh, there's his friend right up there. They stand so still like that. You could walk right by them and not even see them. This is a beautiful end to a hike. I almost kind of feel sorry for the people that go northbound. They just end on that Kaibab Plateau, which is cool, but this is amazing looking. You can see the lake down there. Let's see what's on the other side. Nice. Well, I made it to the infamous bathtub spring. You can see why they call it that, because it's actually a bathtub. And um, you can also see it's dripping out in there. I don't know how well you can see it, but that is very, very clear. So this water looks fantastic. And I'm going to take another break here. And I got here about 15 minutes early, so I'm doing pretty good. And... 
I'm going to drink, I'm going to try to drink two liters. I may take a little extra from here because this is going to be it. Um, I got to camp tonight and then get out tomorrow. So I'm going to sit here and make a plan and drink a bunch of water. So bathtub spring, we made it. There go all my friends from Oracle. They caught me at bathtub spring, so I hung out longer than I had planned, but I wanted to talk to them one more time because they're going to hit the border tonight. So, um, And I've heard that all the hikers are going straight to the border, so again, I guess I'll follow suit. Anyway, they're going to Miller Peak, so I'll probably see them when they're coming down and I'm going up off the little, there's a little side trail where you can actually go to the peak, so I'm definitely gonna do that. And I'm gonna make my goal today and get over there. And if I can go down to the actual border, I know that's gonna be 4.5, 5.8 miles. I'll be from Mexico and 1.9 to walk back up to the pass, so should be about what an eight mile day be uh, really easy. And I carried five liters away from there, so I can camp tonight and have plenty of water. But yeah, everybody told me not to do the road walk to go down there, that nobody cares. So, hope that's the case. So, when I get there, I'm gonna do it. I have to say, this uh, has been one of the most beautiful parts of the trail. I'm really happy to end with all these mountains around. It's really, <laughs> it's just awesome. I mean, I keep looking out there and you can see light shining through there. and. Uh, hike really just feels like it's been I mean almost blessed it's just been everything has gone so well and I'm just loving it here at the end right up ahead I'm gonna be looking for a campsite and uh, I'll see you over there well, hey guys I found this pretty cool little site right here for my last night on trail and uh, 
Should get a good sunrise in the morning, and it's all pretty much downhill, so really kind of a feeling a little sad that this is the last time, but again, mixed emotions. It's been 53 days, and kind of ready to touch the border and move on to the next thing, but this has been the uh, adventure of a lifetime for me so far, and I can't wait to finish it up tomorrow, and uh, I'm glad you guys have been with me on this trip. It's been a lot of fun, and we're going to get up tomorrow, and day 54, we're going to finish it up, and we're going to get picked up at noon down at Montezuma Pass, so... That's it for day 54, and I'll see you in the morning for the final day. So, good night, guys. Well, hey, everybody, good morning, and welcome to day 54, final day of the Arizona Trail. Just wanted to get one last shot of my campsite up here on uh, Miller Peak. About, I was a little over 8,500 feet here, and believe it or not, this is such a great little wind block. It's been windy all night, and it never once um, hit the tent. The doors never flapped in the wind or anything. It's been really great. It was a really great spot for the last night, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, the town of Sierra Vista's down there, and... I got everything out of the tent on the other side. I'm getting ready to tear it down. Just wanted to get this final shot. And uh, we're going to get out of here. We're going to do it. We're going to Mexico. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tent down and we'll get out of here. I just left my campsite a little bit ago and just going to let you know we have less than six miles to get to Mexico and then a 1.9 mile backtrack so less than eight miles today and uh, my legs feel great, I feel great, um, mixed emotions about ending but I'm ready to get down there and touch the border and uh, move on to the next adventure. But uh, yeah, we should be down there pretty quick. I'm uh, feeling good and I'm gonna probably walk fairly quick just to get down there and knock this bad boy out. So let's get down there and do it. Yeah, we got an opening here, let's check it out. Oh yeah. Beautiful morning. All right, Mexico bound, let's do it. We are getting closer. I've been moving pretty fast, so <clears throat> I think we'll get down to Montezuma Pass pretty quick here. And then it's just a shade under two miles to the border. From the beginning of this trip, I always thought I was gonna make it unless I got hurt. I always thought, as long as my feet hold up and I don't break a bone or, you know, do something really bad to my feet or legs, I felt like I was going to make it the whole time. And now here we are, just a couple miles out. Absolutely unbelievable. Man, we are going to do it. Again, now I feel pretty confident saying that I'm going to make it. <laughs> We're gonna do this thing. I should probably stop jogging. I'm really got a lot of adrenaline going. So anyway, let's get down there, man. Deer just walked right out in front of me. I don't know if he even sees me yet. She. All right. My last deer probably of the trip. Thank you. We made it to Montezuma Pass. 
see a couple people up there. I don't see any cars. That's weird. But, uh, anyway, I'm gonna check it out real quick and then try to zip down there, get a feel for what's going on up here. And, uh, we'll see. But, we made it, man. The coolest thing just happened. Uh, the people that I could see at the uh, visitor or the uh, pass there were uh, Ontario Goddess and Ragebow. So they made it down here last night just before sunset and touched the monument. They said they had no problems and it was great to see them again. And they were just about to leave, so we talked for five or ten minutes and I got a good picture of us all together because I had one of Ragebow but not the other guys and so I wanted to get that of Ontario and Goddess because just cool I want to remember all the people that I met on trail and they were all super cool super friendly especially you know they're probably all around 25 and I'm 55 and they were really nice and didn't make me feel weird like I was the old man of the group so I really appreciated that and it was great to see them and know that they finished. So they're heading down to the Coronado uh, National Monument to see if they can get a ride out of there. And I'm hoping that when I get back up here that uh, Michael will be here, but it's way earlier than I thought. I made really good time coming down. So I'm gonna zip down here and see what's happening. So this is it. Let's do this thing, people. This is it right here. Sorry about all the construction noise, but... I did it. I freaking did it, man. I made it. I can't believe it. This is unreal. I'll take a few pictures. I can't believe I made it, you guys. Mexico. I can't hang out here very long because I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm really excited to be here. I better get out of here. There's construction people over there looking at me, but we made it. All right. Hell yeah, what a hike. You know, when I was a kid and I was about 10 or 12 years old and I used to ride my bike super far away from my house and it was kind of like my first, you know, taste of freedom getting away from my parents and my house. And I remember I used to love to ride down the road and I'd go, you know, as far as I could then I'd turn around and then later on I'd come back to that same spot and I'd think, as soon as I cross this line, I'll be farther away than I've ever been. And I used to love doing that as a kid. And I would get pretty far away from the house. Like my parents had no idea I was doing this. Uh, but that was a really magical time in my life. And I loved doing that and exploring. And then later on, um, when I got older, I joined a band and I traveled around America for quite a few years and it was sort of the same thing. I always wondered what's up around the next corner? What's over this next hill? And each place that I would go play I would meet new and interesting people and it was always a lot of fun and that was truly a great time in my life and I enjoyed that so much. And I think that all this sort of ties in with through hiking because this trail reminded me of being a kid and being young again and having that same sense of wonder, you know, and I'd come up over a hill and go and see the next valley and it was just incredible and it just was really the most wonderful hike I've ever done. I can't imagine that anything could be better than this. I mean, this is a beautiful state with a lot of diversity and so if you get a chance, you should really come out and check out Arizona, but yeah, I think that doing this through hike just sort of reminded me of when I was young and having that awe, you know, of coming over a hill or going around a corner and seeing the next landscape. And I've always loved that. And so I guess here I am uh, 45 years later and I'm still doing the same thing. So I guess it's never going to end. 
And uh, anyway, that's the end of the hike. And I just want to say thanks to everybody, uh, all you guys for coming with me. I'd like to thank everybody that I met along the way. So many cool hikers, and I'll list them another time so I don't forget anybody. But just an epic journey and uh, by far my best hike ever. So thanks again for coming with me, and I can't believe we... We did it went from Utah to Mexico and it only took 54 days but but we made it and so thank you so much for coming with me and I guess I'm gonna sign off so one last time this is perfect pitch yeah saying I hope I see you somewhere on the trail you guys take care <laughs>